Hello everyone, Clint Seeley here. <clears throat> um, I have another, uh, I have, have something else that I want to show y'all uh, with the Bernina Embroidery Software version 7. Um, as you may know from the Yahoo message groups, I posted uh, the other day a short snippet saying that I had just attended the dealer training in Orlando um, and was just really kind of watching all these new features and the, the Bernina Educators presentation on the, on the new features. And one of those, as you know, is the stump work tool. Now, while I was watching that stump work tool um, presentation, the, the wheels in my head started spinning because I like to, while I'm watching the presentation, I like to watch, I, I like to think of the different things that I can do with the tool and utilize the tool to do. And one thing that came apparent to me was it may be possible to use the stump work tool to create cut work files right inside of V7. I thought, you know, this may be possible. I asked the, the presenter about that, and she said it wasn't really an advertised feature and she hadn't spent any time trying to do that but in theory that it may be possible, but she didn't know for sure. So as you know, I, I, I'm always up for a challenge or trying to figure out some kind of hack um, around the system. Like, that, you know, with V6, there are several different ways that you can do things in V6. Um, in the Editor Plus version, that you're only supposed to be able to do in Designer Plus, and I have a few tutorials on that. <clears throat> now, you'll have to excuse me if this isn't, um, this this presentation isn't perfect. This is just an impromptu um, I I example. I haven't really rehearsed this. Uh, I figured out one way to actually make these cut work files inside of V7 and export them. There may be there may be another easier way to do it, I just haven't discovered it yet. Let me also preface this by saying I haven't actually exported the cutwork file and put it into uh, a Bernina embroidery machine and actually cut the shape out that I'm going to show you. But in theory, in essence, this should work because V7 will export cutwork files if you're using the stump work tool. Also, this is not, I repeat, this is not a tutorial on how to use the stump work tool to make stump work. This is just kind of a hack using the stump work tool for cut work. Okay. Also, you're going to need, if you, if you have a USB drive, a thumb drive, go ahead and plug that in, one of your USB ports, because we will be exporting to your thumb drive directly from the software that's just kind of the way the the stump work feet tool uh, works it's a little complicated so if you don't get it right off the bat the first time do not be worried watch my video a few times um, you can also watch the the tutorial um, or the presentation on Bernina International's YouTube page might help you a little bit too but without further ado here we go Let's open up the software. And of course, it opens up into the uh, digitizing side. We're going to switch over. This is just the way that I've developed it. We're going to switch over to the artwork canvas. Now, from here, you could, uh, in theory, you could import a JPEG file and do a quick trace and have a vector shape that maybe you want to use as a cut work file that you're going to use in combination with uh, applique, whatever. Uh, I'm not going to get that detailed with it because I just want to show you how to take a shape and turn it into cut work. So I'm just going to go over and select this flyout menu for the interactive draw tools and I'm going to select the ellipse. While I'm at it, I'll, I'll show you one other cool feature. Um, real quick because I'm going to colorize it red and I'm going to take the outline off. Now I've just made a circle here. I'm going to go ahead and convert to embroidery and it's just going to really easily convert that ellipse 
uh, into a digitized object. Now, if you have Editor Plus, this will work as well. As you know, if you have Editor Plus, you're not going to be able to go over to the uh, digitize tools and draw an ellipse in the digitize in the this palette. But you can draw your ellipse or your circle or whatever shape you want in the artwork canvas works both ways so that's just kind of a hack around too another cool thing that I noticed when you draw a shape in the art canvas and convert it to embroidery when you go right here in your reshape object you'll notice that when you click on the reshape reshape object when you digitize an ellipse that way you you have all this information here but you also automatically have your stitch angle uh, that's viewable and you can drag to zero degrees and change your stitch angle right here. If we draw an ellipse using the digitizing tool, okay, and then we edit, you don't get that. All the other information is there, start and, uh, start and stop, exit, points, but you don't get that little handle. So... <laughs> In that, um, in theory, digitizing your shapes in the art canvas and converting them gives you a little more control. I thought that was interesting. I'm just going to undo because that's really not a part of what we're getting into today. So here we are. This is the shape that I digitized into the in the uh, artwork canvas and I digitized. I just converted to embroidery. So here we are. This is the shape that I want to turn into stump work. And again, I apologize if I just kind of meander along. This is very impromptu, unrehearsed. I'm just speaking to you as though we were sitting in the coffee shop having coffee and I was demonstrating this to you as though you were one of my, my friends or my customers. Okay, so here we go. I want to make sure my shape is selected. <clears throat> and I'm still a little fuzzy with this too. Um, here's my shape and I'm going to activate the stump work. And then from here, it's uh, create stump work border. As you get into the stump work tool, you're going to see this tool is a little complicated for the novice or the beginner, which, of course, we all are at this point because none of us have had a stump work tool before. So if you get frustrated, just accept it that this is going to be a little complicated. You're going to have to play with it for a while before you get comfortable with it. Once you select that you're creating the border, this dialog box comes up. The Create Stump Work Border dialog box comes up. Now, you don't have to go ahead and change your properties here, but you can. If, like I said, we're not creating stump work, we're only using this to create a cut work shape. So I'm just going to uncheck Use Wire Gauge and Apply, okay, and then I'm going to hit OK. And you can see the program automatically adds extra elements because it thinks that you're going to um, create a stump work file. Now, one of the really cool features about the stump work tool is once you create the shape, you also want to create a cut or an exit point for your little wires because you would normally be uh, digitizing and embroidering in some wire elements here under this satin stitch. That way you could bend and give a 3D effect to your stump work object. So you would of course need to, you know, hold right over here and click and that's going to give you a cut and an exit point for those wires. If you watch the Bernina International tutorial on the stump work tool on their YouTube page, they'll demonstrate how this works but for our purposes we're not going to do that we're not going to go ahead and cut that out because we won't have a complete object for our cut work file so i'm just going to hit the escape key on my keyboard and that disengages the tool but we're still selected now <clears throat> your object itself and the stump work objects need to be separated uh, for purposes, when you put this on your machine, there's going to be two different files you're working from. So we have to next hit Create Stump Work Subdesign. Okay, 
So we've created a stump work subdesign. <laughs> then I believe I'm going to open the stump work subdesign. And that'll open up the stump work elements by themselves. Even though you're seeing everything, we are now working with the stump work subdesign. I know, a little complicated, but just stick with me. So from here, I think when, when the designers created this tool, they saw that this was possible and they wanted to make it a little more complicated to accomplish uh, exporting cutwork shapes. So they added steps, they added layers to so hopefully it wouldn't be obvious to people that we could do this. <clears throat> I've tried to save this a variety of different ways and so far, and, and that's not to say this is the only way to do it, but so far the only success that I've had is once we get to this point, going up here and hitting right to card or machine. So I'm going to click that dude right there. And I'm going to export a Bernina EXP file straight to my thumb drive. So here we go. The design, and this is what it's going to name itself, design one dash stump work one has been successfully copied to my thumb drive, which is G drive. So I'm going to hit OK. So now what I want to do I have all kinds of elements. I have cut work files, but I have all kinds of elements in my stump work in that exported EXP file that I want to delete out. Well, when you're working on when you're working on a stump work object in the art format, in the project format, you can't really it won't let you bust apart those elements to delete away the stuff you don't want. But when you export as an EXP, and then close down and reopen just the EXP inside the program, you can then go and delete those objects away. Let me show you. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and minimize this because I don't need it. And I'm gonna open the file that we just exported to our G drive or our thumb drive, wherever that is. Um, let's go ahead and hit all design files. I'm gonna go ahead right here I'm going to go ahead and open that exp file. And this is just saying that we can't re we shouldn't rescale it because it's not an art file, which of course is correct. Now see all this extra stuff here that I don't need? Let's go to the color film and see what we have. Everything's grouped together, so the first thing we want to do is ungroup everything. And then I, of course, do not want this, so I'll delete that. Let's see. Hopefully I've done this right. Yes, here we go. Okay. I don't want that line. I don't need the tack down, and I certainly don't need the satin stitch. Boom. So we've deleted away those files, and now what we have here, you're going to see, this looks familiar if you've worked with cut works. What we have left are the cut lines, and then on the end, this is also this is this switches back to thread, and I think they've just developed this, so the design will return to origin recenter the hoop at the end. So I'm just going to delete that away too until I'm left with the four black cut lines. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to maximize the size of this just for display purposes. I'm going to go ahead and do a redraw, slow redraw, so you, you can see this is indeed a Cutworks file. That's This is direction one. So if you had the Cutwork tool on, this would all be in, in one and then two and so on you can see where it's switching from two to three and then ultimately four there and there's the last one so this should be cut works let's double check we'll go to a file and a print preview file print preview and we'll see how it comes up let me zoom in here you see, cut one, cut two, cut three, cut four. Now you have created a Cutworks file right inside version seven. Now all I'm going to do is resave it, of course. I'm just going to resave this file. I believe I can do it this way. Just, yep. Well, I'm going to resave it, but it's going to name it Design One, Stump Work One, and then version 2, copy 2. So now you'll have your Cutworks file 
right on site, right on your thumb drive, ready to load onto your machine. Hopefully, this um, this is a very interesting discovery, and in, y'all get excited about it. Make a couple cutwork shapes and just test them out on your embroidery machine, and then go to the Yahoo groups or right here on my video. Uh, comment below and tell me how it went. Tell me if it worked, please. Um, hopefully this was helpful and we'll see y'all next time.